absorption of digested food now the complex carbohydrates proteins lipids which are in complex form they are all converted into simpler forms act of digestion is totally over now the end products of digestion the end products of digestion includes the end products of digestion of carbohydrates includes glucose galactose fructose the end products of digestion of proteins includes amino acids the end products of digestion of fats includes fatty acids and glycerol now these substances how they are absorbed now these substances they are present here first many substances they enter into the epithelium of the villus huh? this is the lumen of small intestine from the lumen of small intestine first they will enter into epithelial cells and from the epithelial cells some of them enters into blood capillaries and some of the end products will enter into lacteals right glucose and galactose glucose and galactose <coughs> glucose and galactose present inside the lumen from the lumen they enter into epithelium so i represent that epithelium as a simple epithelial cell simple columnar epithelial cell like that so by secondary tract to transport glucose and galactose they they enter from the lumen into this epithelial cell by secondary active transport and from there by facilitated diffusion into blood capillaries when i say capillaries these are capillaries see this is arteriole this is venule from these capillaries are coming so directly they enter into the blood capillaries the fructose they enter into epithelial cell they enter into epithelial cell by facilitated diffusion they will also enter into blood capillaries by facilitated diffusion fructose fructose enters into epithelial cells by facilitated diffusion and from epithelial cells it again enters into blood capillaries also by facilitated diffusion only amino acids amino acids by primary or secondary active transport primary or secondary active transport they enters into the epithelial cell they enter into that epithelial cell and by facilitated diffusion they enter into blood capillaries amino acids they enter into epithelial cell by primary or secondary active transport and from there again into blood capillaries by facilitated diffusion short chain fatty acids they enter into epithelial cells by diffusion 
they also enter into blood capillaries by diffusion only. So this diffusion is simple diffusion. Now what is diffusion? Diffusion is a passive process. Passive process. A substance which is in higher concentration. That same substance is in lesser concentration on the other side of the membrane. So substances move from high concentration to low concentration. Substances they move down the concentration gradient, doesn't require any energy. It's a passive process. So it occurs without involvement of any proteins, it is called simple diffusion. This diffusion is simple diffusion. If the same process occurs with the help of integral proteins present inside the plasma membrane, it is called facilitated diffusion moment of substances from high concentration to low concentration down the concentration gradient involving integral proteins proteins present inside the plasma lemma it is called as facilitated diffusion so wherever facilitated diffusion comes c1 2 3 4 see these areas facilitated diffusion is because of proteins present integral proteins present in plasma membrane help in that process it is called facilitated diffusion or if it is not aided by any proteins, it is done by itself, it is called as simple diffusion. Now here I find secondary active transport, here I find primary and secondary active transport. Now we just saw passive transport, passive transport, diffusion is a passive transport, it doesn't require any energy. That is because substances are moving from high concentration to low concentration. This is a passive transport. But when substances have to move from this side to the other side, here concentration is less, there concentration is more. Substances are to move in this direction. Energy is required. So you call it as active transport. If directly energy is utilized for moving substance, some substances from low concentration to high concentration. When I say from low to high, I say it means against the concentration gradient. Here I use the term down the concentration gradient. Here against the concentration gradient. From low concentration to high concentration, substances are moving. So it requires energy. If direct use of energy is utilized, if ATP is directly utilized to do that activity, it is called as primary active transport. There is also secondary active transport here, here and here there is secondary active transport. Secondary active transport means, now for example, one substance is moving from this side to this side. It is moving down the concentration gradient. At that time, some entropy is released. Some entropy, release of some energy is released. That energy is utilized to move another substance against the concentration gradient. Yeah. When some substances are moving down the concentration gradient, some energy is released. That energy is utilized to move other substances against the concentration gradient. So there is indirect use of energy which is called as secondary active transport. You can see secondary active transport here and here. You can see primary active transport here. You can see simple diffusion here. You can see facilitated diffusion at so many other places. Now glucose and galactose fructose, amino acid, short chain fatty acids. See, remember all these are finally entering into blood capillaries. But they are not directly entering, they first enter into epithelial cells of wills and from there they enter into blood capillaries. How they are entering into blood capillaries? Some of them they are entering by simple diffusion, some of them they are entering by facilitated diffusion, some by primary or secondary active transport. Now after entering into the epithelial cells, they will move into blood capillaries. 
So they will move into blood capillaries either by simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion. So movement from that epithelial cells into blood capillaries occurs by simple diffusion here or in most of the cases by facilitated diffusion. One other, continue just. But we still have long chain fatty acids. and glycerol. This long chain fatty acids and glycerol. Now, in the process of absorption, still some long chain fatty acids and glycerol is still left behind inside small cavity of small intestine. Now these substances, they, they combine in presence of bile salts and in presence of cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins they form missiles long chain fatty acids and glycerol these two these two they combine with that alcohol cholesterol it's one type of fat and fat soluble vitamins. Fat soluble vitamins includes A, D, E, K. Hmm? So they are already dissolved inside the fat. They are there inside the fat. So they form minute droplets. The droplets, how small they are? They are 4 to 7 nanometers. Yeah, absolutely small. So that minute droplets are called missiles the measles in presence of bile salts they undergo diffusion they undergo diffusion so these measles they undergo diffusion they undergo diffusion they enter into epithelial cells so that epithelial cells they have entered. From epithelial cells, inside the epithelial cells, remember bile salts are not entering into the epithelium, but bile salts are required for their diffusion. Bile salts are left behind. The remaining things have entered inside. The long chain fatty acids and glycerol, these two, they have combined. After going into the cell, they have combined together. They are now called as chylomicrons. Both of them, they have combined together. Uh, after they combine together, they, they are called triglycerides. Again, both of them, they combine together and they form triglycerides. Now, the triglycerides along with some phospholipids, cholesterol, proteins, fat soluble vitamins, fat soluble vitamins. See, measles, measles are very small, they are 4 to 7 nanometers.
missiles are four to seven nanometers they undergo diffusion they have gone into the cell so after entering into cell again both of these long chain fatty acid and glycerol they combine together to form triglycerides they form triglycerides now triglycerides combine with other lipids phospholipids when i say phospholipids it is fatty acid combined with phosphate fatty acids one side combines with phosphates the cholesterol is there fat soluble vitamins are there and some proteins are there much of this a combination of all these together is called chylomicrons triglycerides 85 to 92 percent they are triglycerides only 6 to 12 percent phospholipids cholesterol 1 to 3 percent proteins 1 to 2 percent so you can see a larger fat droplets because both of them combined together it combined with lipids it combined with proteins cholesterol is there fat soluble vitamins are there so it is around 30 to it is around 30 to 50 nanometers so it is little larger fat droplets they are called as chylomicrons chylomicrons are formed inside the epithelial cells it will undergo exocytosis so it will undergo exocytosis it will enter into lacteans remember the long chain fatty acid and glycerol they are not entering into blood capillaries they are entering into lacteals this is the lacteal lacteal is a branch of lymph vessel so from there it enters into lymph vessels lacteal is a branch of lymph vessel so it enters into lymph vessel we know lymph vessels open into lymph ducts so we have got the left lymphatic duct the left lymphatic duct and the right lymphatic duct both these lymphatic ducts they go into subclavian veins the left lymphatic duct itself is called thoracic duct it finally enters into subclavian veins huh? at the junction between internal jugular and subclavian vein they are entering back into the lymph the lymph is entering back into the veins so finally the lymphatic ducts they open into veins so they have gone back to blood vessel vein means it's a blood vessel so it has gone back veins will again go back to heart and from heart again into so they have gone back into blood capillary blood vessels so in the blood vessels in the blood vessels I got three layers tunica externa tunica media tunica interna tunica externa contains collagen and elastin in arteries they have got both tunica media contains smooth muscles tunica interna contains simple squamous epithelium so there is a single layer of endothelial cells so that endothelial cells of blood capillaries produce lipoprotein lipase so that is the enzyme now how how are these fatty acid and glycerol they already took the form of triglycerides in missiles they are separate but in chylomicrons they have been combined under the action of lipoprotein lipase the triglycerides are broken down so under the action you get long chain fatty acids and glycerol so that both are separated again inside the blood capillaries and they are present they are present in blood they are carried by blood they are carried to adipocytes and hepatocytes adipocyte fat cell now fat cells wherever fat storage is there to that area hepatocytes means to liver so two places where they are ca carried the fatty acid and glycerol are again combined together so they again combine together to form triglycerides if we say neutral fat or tissue fat and i say neutral fat it is triglycerides it's a combination of three fatty acid and gly one glycerol so this is the final 
Now, inside the liver cell, inside the fat, is fat cells, triglycerides are stored. See the fate of long chain fatty acids and glycerol. Long chain fatty acid and glycerol, like all other end products of digestion, they are not entering into blood capillaries. They enter into lacteals. In that way, they differ. And now these two, in presence of bile salts, bile salts become crucial for absorption of long chain fatty acid and glycerol. No bile salts, no absorption. So getting it comes and attaches, attaches and getting absorbed inside, that's done with the help of bile salts. Now long chain fat has glycerol along with cholesterol and some vitamins A, D, E, K or fat soluble vitamins. So they form minute droplets called measles. So they form measles and they undergo diffusion into epithelial cells. Inside the epithelial cells, both of these they combine together to form triglycerides. Long chain fatty acid and glycerol combine together to form triglycerides. So they combine with phospholipids, fatty acids, combination of phosphate, phosphate group, cholesterol, proteins, fat soluble vitamins, all these together called as chylomicrons. Triglycerides includes 85 to 92 percent, phospholipids 6 to 12 percent, cholesterol 1 to 3 percent, proteins 1 to 2 percent. See that triglyceride after these two combine they they become triglycerides that triglycerides along with other lipids and proteins and cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins they form a larger fat droplets 30 to 50 nanometers so they are called chylomicrons they undergo exocytosis to enter into lacteals from lacteals they enter into lymph vessels from lymph vessels they enter into subclavian vein so they become part of blood vessels so heart and arteries so they come back to into um, blood vascular system so they come back into veins and arteries and the endothelial lipase the, the innermost layer endothelium produces a lipase it is called endothelial lipase that lipase breaks down the triglycerides into fatty acid glycerol so it is transported as such through blood so it's it is taken to the liver and uh, fat cells so liver cells hepatocytes and fat cells where again both of them they combine together they become triglycerides and they are stored as such